Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I know that this is an unusual way to attend a conference, but that's how the things are. So my name is Alexander, and let me introduce great professors who worked on this paper. So we have another Alexander, Andrea, and also Mark. The title of this paper is Interleaving Physics and Data-Driven Models for Power System Transient Dynamics. And let me start first by introducing the key ideas. So when dealing with transient phenomena in large-scale power systems, um, usually people decides, decide whether they want to use white box modeling or, gray or black box modeling, and they both have some advantages and disadvantages. For instance, in white box, we could construct a detailed model of a system by writing many highly complex equations, but the problem with this is that we still might not be able to capture all phenomena and our model might not be sufficient enough. And also, with the abundance of data that is available nowadays, why not use that data as well? So our idea was to combine theoretical knowledge and data and to make some kind of hybrid approach which would be able to model these transient phenomena. This, is also, this also has the advantage of making a very robust algorithm, which is always a desirable, desirable thing to have. So, um, so what we decided to, to use is a two-step procedure, which is best shown on the graph. Uh, so this is just uh, the general way in which any system a system can be described. It's a set of differential and algebraic equations. So our hybrid approach is uh, can be seen here. So first we start with information geometry, and the idea of this uh, algorithm is to try to obtain a reduced model that would be able to explain the dynamics of the system. But of course, because this is just reduce model, um, it is not perfect enough. It cannot explain all the dynamics or, or the total behavior of the system. So then we make the difference between real measurements and what our model tells us and try to somehow model these differences using purely data-driven techniques. So we want to make another model and append it to the original model, and by combining these two models, we hope that we will get a better prediction of the future behavior of the system. Uh, these, uh, uh, these data-driven techniques that are used to model the differences are compressed sensing and Koopman, Koopman operator. So let me now quickly say something about to combine, to make this hybrid approach. So when it comes to information ge geometry, uh, the key idea here is that parametric model is interpreted as a manifold, and parameters of the model act as coordinates. Um, so how, we, how do we find which parameters are important and which are not? Well, to do that, we have to calculate geodesic, and this is done by solving these second order ordinary differential equations. Uh, the way we do it is in iterative fashion. And with each step, we move through the space of parameters. And we can notice that some parameters will go either to zero or to infinity. And if, when that happens, we say that that's singularity. And we call that parameter identifiable. And uh, that's how we decide which parameters are important for the behavior of the system and which are not. This way we obtain a reduced model of the system. But as I said, a uh, reduced model cannot explain the total behavior, so we need to model somehow the differences, and this is done with the next two um, methods. One of them is compressed sensing, and the idea here is very simple, and that is a uh, that idea relies on the on the fact that most signals are sparse in some kind in some other domain. 
this other domain could be something as generic as Fourier transform basis. So here we have a signal of length n, and if we are able to transform it to some other uh, basis, uh, then this signal s might be sparse, for instance, in Fourier domain, and it's sparse, for instance, it might have only k non-zero values. So the idea here is to take p measurements, where p is much smaller than the original length of the signal, and although this might seem as an um, undetermined problem, because we have many unknowns and very few equations, um, if we rephrase this as a problem of minimization, then it's possible to solve this. So we want to find S that has that is as sparse as possible while still uh, satisfying the constraints that are uh, that we get by taking measurements. That's the key idea of compressed sensing. And when it comes to Kuchman operator, um, so let's assume that we have states x that evolve in some way. So from current moment to the next moment, we get by some transition function, which can be highly complicated, nonlinear. We might not have it uh, in explicit form. And because it, this is nonlinear, the idea here is to try to move to some other space with some function phi. Uh, and hope that in that other space, when we get uh, variables y, maybe the evolution of those variables will be linear. And this indeed is the case. So in that uh, other space, there can exist some other operator, that's Koopman operator, uh, which is linear, but unfortunately it is also infinite dimensional. And the good thing here is that if we do eigen decomposition of this Koopman operator, we get some eigen functions and eigen values, and uh, we can keep only those eigen functions which have the largest eigen values. In that way, in that way, we we reduce this model significantly and make it uh, simpler. So. Um, the Koopman operator is linear. As I said, unfortunately, it is infinite dimensional, but in dynamic mode decomposition, we try to approximate this infinite dimensional operator with the best fit linear but finite model that tries to predict the evolution of states. And this actually works quite well, as we will show on our simulations. So, um, we, uh, we performed some simulation on the standard IEEE 14 bus test system, but we modified it slightly by adding a doubly fed induction generator and also direct drive synchronous generator. Uh, they model wind uh, wind turbines and also solar panels uh, which are used more and more frequently nowadays so to get some kind of transients to generate them we created short uh, uh, short circuit in this case in bus four and we did that for many different initial conditions uh, which were chosen by looking at load and generation patterns throughout the day. Um, so in the, first, uh, in the first step, we applied information geometry and then other two uh, data-driven techniques. So on the left, you can see the graph of so on the left, uh, you can see the graph of original measurements. And on the right, you can see uh, signals that we get by using a reduced model. And clearly, we did capture some dynamics, but not all of it. There are so many details that cannot be captured by this simple model. These differences are shown 
down here on this surface surface plot and obviously these uh, differences can be quite uh, significant in some cases because simple model is great but still it needs some improvement and to do it we then use compressed sensing in next step so these differences were then transformed into a grayscale figure and we, we solved the minimization problem and in compressed sensing and down here you can see that many coefficients actually have uh, very small or negligible values some are zero so the idea here is that we can just ignore them not use them and keep only for instance five percent of the highest values and still be able to reconstruct signals properly and this indeed is the case as you can see uh, uh, so figures on the left and on the right are quite similar even though only five percent uh, of coefficients was kept this means of course high degree of compression and then we try to take this one step further and to use Koopman operator to try to propagate our states into the future but using only 4% of the largest eigenvalues. So out of all eigenfunctions of the Koopman operator, we kept only 4%. And on these two graphs, you can see on the left the original differences, in this case of the reactive power, and on the right differences as they are predicted after using compressed sensing and dynamic mode decomposition. And obviously there is high degree of overlap even though we kept very little of uh, of the original data so in conclusion this is a novel hybrid approach which gives robustness to system identification problem we combined physics and data-driven modeling so uh, combining the knowledge that we had with the data using information geometry compressed sensing and Koopman operator and these results were verified on WFAT induction generator but the, the best thing about this algorithm is that it can be applied to any other dynamic component and simulations as seen before show a high degree of similarity of, of signals so good prediction powers but at the same time uh, high compressibility of the signals, which is always a good thing to have. So those are our results. If you have any questions, please feel free to send them to us. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, advantage of being uh, pre-recorded is that we are on time. I saw one question, but then it was removed, but I think it may be good to, to restate it. It was from, um, uh, yeah, so it was it was about, uh, basically it was uh, in the beginning of a presentation when uh, uh, discussion of faults uh, didn't start. And it was a question of if, if it applies to faults. I guess you answer this question, but maybe uh, if, if authors can comment on that. Uh, additionally, it would be good. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Misha. I think that the question is for, for us. Uh, and uh, so it is, how would you include uh, uh, systems with switching? And uh, of course, cases in power systems are fast valving, uh, excitation. Uh, and uh, I mean, in, to be honest, I don't know. Uh, why do I think that we may be able to say something relevant about it is because the, on the first step, when you're using differential geometry to geodesics to reduce the model, uh, you are, of course, looking for kind of lower order, lower order manifold buried uh, inside the, the, the model. And that, that's where singular perturbation-like ideas uh, may help. And I know that fast valving was looked in through that lens, so we can kind of piggyback on, the, on that work. Uh, the, the, the part we then looking into the structure in, in the error 
uh, is what we try to, to look into now, and that may also help. Uh, but again, to, to actually say that it will work, I think one would have to try. Uh, in terms of, um, ah, uh, there, there is another question by, by uh, Andre uh, about is there a physical meaning uh, to the basis used for compressing sensing? Uh, I guess uh, the, the, you know, physicalness of, of, of things is in the, eye, in the eye of the beholder. Uh, I think that we did, this happens to be I mean, results here in the Fourier basis and the, uh, we in, in power systems have strong attachment to it because many components are designed to operate in sinusoidal or near, near sinusoidal mode of operation and many components act as filters or bandpass filters that strongly uh, 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 respond to some sinusoids and much less to some others. So yes, we, we did uh, try uh, with, with, the, with, the, uh, with Fourier and these are the results that you saw, but is there a better basis? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I think this one, has, as your example, justified it. For, well, I hope so. I know someone who was involved with dynamic phasers <laughs> 25 years back. Yes, I hope so. Uh, that, that shows that it is useful. Uh, but I would also say that we have to be open-minded, that, uh, that it may be that, uh, that there are other bases uh, that are equally or even, even more useful. Uh, I think the, the usefulness of Fourier basis comes from its, I think, interpret interpretability. Because if you see results there, uh, it kind of connects with the much intuition that we as engineers have uh, about the way systems operate in steady state, near steady state, and so on. And I think to follow up on the question that you had to the, to the, to the first talk, I, I think it is nice to try to identify a, a good physical model, and if you succeed, well, that's great, because that certainly is, is, is a portable result. However, both because of reason of data and because of the reason of some models being somewhat convoluted, there is no guarantee that you will always find a solution. Uh, so in that case, it may, uh, you, you may append it kind of in two ways. <clears throat> One is what we showed here, which is, well, add the, the data-driven part, which is, uh, in our case, the Koopman uh, uh, operator approximation model. But the other could be to go back and see, well, uh, should you add some more physics? And that's an idea that uh, several people, of course, have played with. Uh, we have a little paper at the general meeting coming in a month uh, on, on symbolic regression in which you try to add physics kind of gently, but, but still to see if there's additional physics that was not in the first edition of the model and then see if that works. So I think both paths are interesting and we, we have scratched the surface on them, but there's way much more work to be done. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Alex. Um... We still have a couple of questions. I actually also have a question, a couple of minutes. Uh, I also have a question. Sure. Uh, so those three methods which you have, information geometry, comprehensive sensing, and Koopman, um, mm -hmm. well, uh, they uh, not, of course, they're different, uh, but they kind of uh, aimed at the same goal, right? So model reduction. So did you try to uh, play with a, a kind of ease of them separately, not in combination? And uh, what, uh, what uh, if you did, what, what comparison uh, told you? Well, we played more with, much more with the differential geometry than with others. And uh, as, as, as a paper trail can show, uh, over the last couple of years, we, we applied differential geometry type ideas, computational differential geometry. And we is a real lead. The real lead here is uh, Mark Tranström, uh, our friend and colleague uh, coming also from the physics world. Uh, who, who, who developed, uh, I think, an absolutely amazing computational procedure for calculating geodesics uh, in high dimensional spaces. Uh, so that we, we checked and that worked for many, uh, in many interesting cases. It gives you a sort of parameter centric view of the world, which doesn't always, uh, for example, coincide uh, with the ideas that are based on states like singular perturbation. And so, for example, in synchronous generators, we sometimes get similar models and sometimes get different. With the others, I, I think we are following on the, on, on the trail of, of, of others. Of course, the, uh, the, the Koopman, uh, there has been much more work by other people. We find it useful. Of, of course, the, the devil is always in the details. Uh, the, the dynamic mode decomposition, extended DMD, all these ideas are good, but I think how they work is strongly problem dependent. Uh, and in that, we of course have to all have more to do and we certainly have to learn from colleagues who are ahead okay. of us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alex.